Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Faberly, and in this video we are going to cover uh, flexibility with the game of golf. And I've got some animated, some video here I'm going to show. I'm going to show um, what the laser kind of looks like. I'm going to go over and I'm going to show in this 3D anatomy model uh, some really neat stuff of the flexibility aspect of what needs to happen and how the hip and leg functions. And then I'm going to uh, show some other um, animations that I did in another YouTube channel talking about uh, normal muscle contraction, rigor mortis in a dead person, and then what a living human being can deal with to keep muscles tight that is likened to rigor mortis. Then I'm going to show this real briefly here about the flexibility that got, was gained in the hips and knees um, from a, another guy that I worked on and just was dramatic change, and then how to go and find uh, providers that have these low-level lasers. So to begin with, just want to look at the golf swing because what most people are doing to get a better golf game is they're, they're trying to loosen their muscles through stretching and I most of you probably already know that stretching is very limited right you, you can do it you can do it you can do it it helps just a little bit um, and then if you forget to do it for a few days you're back to square one and nobody ever seems to get anywhere with it I don't know if you've noticed that in your body but stretching is very limited and it just doesn't work very well and the reason it doesn't work well is it doesn't, it doesn't fix the chemical problem underneath in the muscles that's actually causing the tightness in the first place. So if you can just get over um, the concept that a muscle's tight and just needs to be stretched, that right there, if you can get over that, that concept and get into the concept that it's tight due to a chemical reason that can be fixed with the lasers, then this will make more sense to you. And so I go over in, in this video on my website here, I go into this and um, so I show normal healthy muscle function the rigor mortis and then this abnormal and I'm just gonna just show you kind of how cool this video is because these these little dots are all calcium ions in here causing contractions subtly not real intensely and, um, and and it's because of the calcium in here and the pumps not being able to get rid of the calcium in here so here this will work the same it's always short and slightly contracted, but then when you get the nerve impulse, it kicks in more. And more contraction happens, you can see that there. And then the pumps do their best to pull the calcium out when the impulse, the nerve impulse is gone, but they fail to pull it all out. So the contraction is just still there. It's not as nice as relaxed as what other muscles could be that have energy. Okay, so it all comes down to energy production. And I don't want to bore you with this because most people seriously aren't going to care why it happens. They just want to know about the lasers. But this is the video to go watch if you want to know why it happens. And, um, and therefore, it'll explain it to you and it'll make a lot more sense. So when you look at the human body, um, now I know in the video is the right hip that was stretching back. Here I have the left hip that was stretching back. Um, but just real briefly the muscles in here because most people don't understand what's going on this is uh, this muscle here is called your psoas major this tinier one is called the psoas minor and this one's called the iliacus so the two big ones are the primary things forget about the small psoas minor here uh, these two muscles are your hip flexors your primary hip flexors the psoas major attaches to the five lumbar vertebra in your back so it is a low back muscle and it comes down and connects to the inner part of your um, hip. So you can see it kind of going in there. If I remove maybe the sartorius, you still can't see it. Okay, there it goes and inserts in there. So it inserts medially on the inside and you can also tell it takes quite a dive forward and then deep to get back to the hip. Isn't that neat? So when you're doing hip flexor stretches like this position would be with the hip back like this, those are primarily what you're doing. And I'm just gonna get those muscles back here. So um, when, when I'm doing the laser, trying to help with people's low back pain or just try to get their hips more flexible, this is an area, this is like a go-to area. Most people are tight in this vicinity of their body, both sides. They don't know it, they don't feel it. Very few people ever hurt here. When someone does come in saying they hurt in the front of the hip, I'm just 
stunned that they're actually saying that because people usually do not hurt there. But they are really, really tight there. And when that is tight, it will put extra strain and burden on the low back muscles to try to keep the person upright. Because when your hip flexors are tight, they pull you forward when you're standing up. And therefore, the back muscles have to try to pull you back up. And I have, a, I have other videos on my, web, my YouTube channel that uh, show that, especially if you have trouble like laying on your back at night without something underneath your knees. Like if your low back hurts when you're laying on your back on a hard floor or in bed or um, you're just laying on your back, period, then you have these tight hip flexors. You don't even know it. You just think you have back pain. But you loosen these up and the whole low back relaxes while you're on the table having this done right here. And it just, it's the most coolest thing because people can feel it. And nowadays I concentrate all three lasers on one spot, one side at a time. And then I'll do the other side with all three. It just, it just seems to work a little bit better because I'm covering more of the muscle at one time, even if it's half the time. But um, anyway, um, people can tell that right away. So, and my YouTube channel, by the way, is right here. Just Jeff Aberly is my YouTube channel. So if you click on that, you'll see all the different videos I have. In fact, I'll just do that real quick and just show you. So, so it's about plantar fasciitis. Um, this is the one here. If low back pain prevents you from sleeping on your back. <laughs> uh, it's already got 2,300 views in two months. I mean, that's actually quite a bit. Um, so this goes and shows the same kind of model and talks about why that's a problem and how that hurts. So... Um, the other things that I work in the hip, people have lots of upper quad tightness and they don't know that. They also, their adductors are often very tight. Um, and so this area up here too also gets kind of gummed up and gets very tight and hard, not just not just here. But if, if anybody's interested in this, you just can kind of get into a slight stretch position um, you know, down on the ground, put both knees down on the ground, one leg in front of you, one leg in back, and basically kind of get in this type of a position. So the leg that's back will be in this position. And so you can just feel the hardness and the tightness. And you don't know what normal is because you're probably really, really tight there. But it should be soft. And so the low-level lasers will create that. They will create that loosening effect. And, it's, um, and again, it's not by burning anything. It's not by damaging anything. What the lasers do is they allow your body in that area to create more energy. And it's not the light energy that does it. The light energy just fixes a problem in the mitochondria of your cells. And the mitochondria are responsible for taking oxygen and glucose and turning it into the energy of the body called ATP. And ATP is really the energy of your body that your body runs on. It doesn't run on glucose. It doesn't run on oxygen. The mitochondria in your cells make this form of energy called ATP. It's just like you can't put oil in your gas tank. You have to put gasoline. Gasoline is a refined oil, and so it's a specific type of energy that the body wants, and the mitochondria do it. The light fixes the mitochondrial problem. Your body then, within seconds of this being on, can start making more energy from glucose and oxygen. It's very neat. You would think it would be this is adding the energy to your body to make the muscles loosen. It's not. This is adding a specific type of energy that the mitochondria want, um, and even that's it's not exactly correct either, but that other video explains it. So to get this type of flexibility back, you would have to work all the muscles through here with the lasers. Again, stretching really isn't going to get you much of a change. Uh, you got to work the quads. The back of the knee and the, all the muscles surrounding the knee would be huge for getting this type of effect. Again, this pelvis is going straight ahead and this foot is facing me. So that's 90 degrees. That is not natural. Try standing that way and you go, boy, that's a lot of stress on the knee. Well, the low-level lasers could help with that too by fixing all the stuff down here. And then all the flexibility through the trunk and the pelvis and uh, the ribs, all the muscles between the ribs. If you've ever been out to eat and have ribs, whether they're pork or beef, um, that's the muscles between all your ribs. And those two, if those are tight, they will create... The, the, you know, they, will, they will prevent you from rotating. Shoulder problems, easily handled usually with the low-level lasers, including the chronic problems that people have with the supraspinatus. So supraspinatus is the muscle up here at the top, and that's where everybody's always complaining about with their shoulders. You notice that? That is the smallest of the four 
rotator cuff muscles. The biggest problem is actually in the armpit. When you go work in the armpit with the arm up overhead, you'll find all kinds of tight things that the low-level laser therapy just loosens up and boom, the person stands up and their shoulders all freed up and they're like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? That's the coolest thing. And it's just really, really fun. I um, When I first learned about this low-level laser therapy, I thought it was just I just, I just didn't think anything of it. I'm an electrical and computer engineer. I'm also a chiropractor. I thought the low-level lasers were the dumbest things. After one day at a seminar, I'm like, oh boy, I got to get one of these machines. And I found out how powerful they are, not in terms of energy. They're, you don't even feel these things on you. They don't even make, they don't even create heat in the tissues. Sometimes the tissues feel warm from the extra blood flow that's coming there, but they're very low power. You don't feel them. You just feel the relaxation that happens from them. And the low-level lasers, in my opinion, they're going to change healthcare because they're they're phenomenal for wound healing, for uh, third-degree burns, um, for any type of broken bone. It dramatically speeds the healing, but it does so because of the body's ability to make energy. And when your cells cells have energy, they can do what they're designed to do, whatever that is. And so you just heal faster. I'm talking about them in the realm of using them for um, uh, relaxing muscles and. Uh, loosening up fascial pathways and all this other stuff. But hospitals should have these lasers in their in their um, hospitals to fix people. They'd have a lot better throughput of people. They wouldn't be in the bed all the time. They wouldn't have the infection rates as much. They just so many things could be handled that the hospitals would get on board with these lasers and start using them. And there are hospitals that have them, but they're just not near enough. And most MDs don't even know what that's what they're what this is about. They haven't even heard of it. Nothing against them. They just haven't heard about it. Um, So anyway, but this is what I'm talking about with gaining flexibility with low-level lasers, doing it in all the key areas. And, you know, even if it takes, uh, you know, some high-speed videography or uh, even low-speed, it doesn't really matter because it's the endpoints you're interested in. You're interested in that, that spot right there and then probably right about here at the follow through. Some of that might be interesting to see what's going on, but I'm interested in that position. And because that's really the extreme of the flexibility aspect that we're looking for. So, anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you, oh, and just real quick, too, I, I know I already mentioned this, but this is 40 minutes of low level laser therapy, that exact same thing that she was on. 40 minutes of that, and look how much further this guy could get down. Now, afterwards, his knees didn't hurt him near as much and his low back I think felt okay or was vice versa one of them still hurt a little bit but the other one felt good but look how much further he got down in 40 minutes and that will last it's not like you have to keep doing that over and over again to keep this once you fix that energy production problem it is fixed now one visit isn't going to fix it but just you know, just keep that in mind too and then so if you're looking for a physician or a provider that does the lasers you can go to urconia.com and right at the top, you'll find the find a provider. This is on every web page of their site here. So find a provider. It'll take you to this site, and then you can type in a zip code and um, and, and find anybody that does it. The only the only thing is they don't tell you which machines they have. So there are different machines. They have different laser systems here. So I have um, the PL Touch. That's a handheld. I have the EVRL. That's the one that has the violet and a red laser. I have one of those, and I have two of the FX635s. And so these are FDA cleared for chronic low back pain and chronic plantar fasciitis pain. Um, So those are two biggies that people have, and they're always going for more clearances. I don't know what they're working on now. but um, So uh, different machines. But the problem is is you don't know which one the providers have from this listing. And maybe in the future they'll have that. So you just have to call and find out. But all these lasers work. That's the neat thing. They all work. And uh, it's just, yeah, I like having multiple ones for different, different purposes. So if you can afford, if you're a provider, a doctor, <laughs> and you just want to spend more money and get some more of these things, they're all helpful. Uh, they all rock, actually. So um, anyway, I hope that was helpful. Again, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberly, and I'm a chiropractor here in Madison, Wisconsin in the United States. And uh, I hope this was helpful in understanding about low-level laser therapy and gulf flexibility. Thanks for watching.